Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. We've got our first project for 2018 completed, and that's the Eye of Agamotto and the Eye of Agamotto stand. And today we're going to talk about how I did all the finishing on these models, so stick around. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. Last year during the 365 project, actually on day 364, we printed out the Eye of Agamotto and we used three different colors of Matter Hacker's Pro Series filament to complete the model. And it actually turned out really, really good and it was part of the projects that I wanted to complete this year. And as soon as the 365 project ended, I broke open some new filament that I've been dying to try out and that was some verbatim PLA. And the first thing I printed out was the Eye of Agamotto stand and it turned out really, really good. So I had my two models ready, for go, ready to go for 2018 projects. So now that I have all the finishing done, I want to share all the steps that I went through to really make these models look the way they do now. And if you recall, back on day 364, and you can watch that video here, I printed out the Eye of Agamotto from Doctor Strange. And this is actually created by Black Ram Industries, and I'll put the link down in the description so you guys can download and print this one yourself. And I used a ton of support material on this to really get it to come out right. And we did use three different colors of Matter Hacker's Pro Series filament. We used purple, silver, and gold. And once it was all cleaned up and I was happy with the way it actually operated with the eye, the way it was turning, I actually set it aside after we were done with the 365 project because I knew it was something I wanted to work on this year. And as soon as the 365 project ended, actually on the very same day, like I said earlier, I actually broke open some new filament that I've had laying around for about 11 months and that was some verbatim PLA. And the filament is actually really, really good, but it's really tough to find in 1.75. And the first thing I printed out was the Eye of Agamotto stand. And the print actually turned out awesome. I was super happy with the results. And again, I put that aside because I knew it was gonna be a project that I wanted to complete this year. And as soon as I started doing the finishing, I started shooting some time-lapse footage of all the different steps that I went through. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The first thing we're going to talk about is the actual eye of Agamotto, and it sits nicely in this little stand. And let me pull it out of here for you guys. And I did have some issues with it once it was painted, and we'll talk about that as we go. But after the painting, and I did a little bit of sealing with some enamel paint, the eye function actually works pretty good. It doesn't close all the way, but that's one of the problems I occur that I encountered during the finishing work, and we'll talk about that next. The first thing I did was I did some light sanding on the model. Now I didn't want to do a lot of heavy sanding because there is a lot of detail in this model. And actually because of the support material left behind a lot of scarring, I actually left a lot of that still on the model because it gave it a really cool, authentic, kind of hand forged look to it. So I was okay with a lot of the scarring. The basically the only sanding that I really did was on the cover here, just to make sure that these areas here were nice and smooth because you could see some layer lines. And the sandpaper I used is actually some really cool sandpaper. I'm gonna put the eye down here. It's this flexible sandpaper from 3M and I used some 220 grit just to take off a little bit of the layer lines and stuff. And I really love this sandpaper because it's super flexible and you can use it wet dry. So once I had all the layer lines removed from the cover, it was ready to start putting on some basic rattle can filler primer. So it was off to the garage and it's time to start applying a little bit of that filler primer from Rust-Oleum. And th again, this is just some basic rattle can filler primer. And it works really good if you put on some heavy coats. But I only wanted to put on some light coats onto the model because I didn't want to fill in too much of the detail, but I did want to cover up any layer lines that I left behind. And it actually turned out really good once the primer was on there. I did do a little bit of sanding in some spots once the primer was down, just to make sure it was nice and smooth so I could start applying my paint. From there, it was time to start applying the gold paint. And I used some metallic gold paint, just some basic stuff from Walmart. It's just some 50 cent Walmart metallic gold acrylic paint. And it's actually some really good paint. But the problem was, it's semi-translucent. And I found that if I let the paint actually cure a little bit on my little area that where I was painting, it would actually thicken up a little bit and make it easier to paint. But I only discovered that a little bit later on while I was doing the painting and it required quite a few coats and that was my mistake. What I should have done is use the exact same gold that I used on the stand or maybe even a different gold but in a rattle can instead of using um, hand painting on layers of acrylic me metallic paint onto, this, uh, onto the eye parts. So it took quite a few days and I had to let it dry for about 24 hours before I could actually do anything with it 
for the next coat of paint. So as you can see, I put on quite a few coats of this metallic paint. And that was really my, my only mistake when I did the model. Everything else turned out really good. It was just the gold part. Once it was all dry, it was time to do the weathering stage. Now for the weathering, I started off using paper towels after I applied a little bit of paint with the paintbrush. But I found that I could actually use a little bit better control over how much paint I was putting down and how much paint I was wiping off by using cotton swabs. Now these are really disposable, they're, they're super cheap, but I actually suggest getting some that are actually wound a little bit tighter, not the cheaper ones, a little bit more expensive ones, because then you won't have any of the little cotton hairs coming off while you're doing your weathering or your painting if you decide to use them for that. But I found them to be really, really handy. What I could do was apply a small coat of paint, let it dry for a couple of seconds, and take a clean Q-tip and wipe off that paint. Now, if I had too much paint on, I would dip a clean Q-tip into the, or a cotton swab, I don't want to say any brand names, cotton swab into some water, let it drip off a little bit, and then wipe off a little bit of the paint as I went. And I slowly went around and did all the weathering on the eye parts very carefully until I got it to the right look that I want. And I actually wanted mine to be heavily weathered because this was actually my very first project in finishing, and I wanted mine to be just a little bit more screen ready. And I've learned being in filmmaking that you should actually over exaggerate a little bit of the weathering so it'll pop on film. Not that I'm gonna make a movie or anything, but I just wanted mine to be a little bit more screen accurate by doing some heavy weathering. So once I had all my Q-tip cleaning up and weathering done, I reassembled the whole eye using a little bit of super glue, a little bit of Gorilla Super Glue, the gel form, and the two pins that are underneath the cover, and I glued the whole apparatus together. And that's where I found out where my mistake was. And that's because so many layers, so many layers of that metallic gold paint had actually ended up covering up some of the slots and some of the mechanism and making it very hard to operate. So I had to take it apart a few times and actually go in and clean it up and pull some of that paint all the way down to the primer to actually get the mechanisms to work. Now, it actually didn't close all the way when I first assembled it back on day 364 of the 365 project. So I knew there was a possibility it could close all the way now but with all that extra uh, layers of metallic acrylic paint on there, that probably wasn't gonna happen. And sure enough, it doesn't close all the way, but the mechanism works really nice and it turned out really, really good. So I was super happy with it. The next step that I did was I took some uh, enamel, clear enamel paint, and I did a light dusting over the whole prop just to make sure I sealed in all my acrylic. So if anybody handled it, or if it did get wet for some reason, it wouldn't smear because I did use acrylics for all my weathering and for the actual gold paint. Now again, if I had used some of the rattle can gold that I had used on the stand or a different color, I probably wouldn't have to worry about it. Even though I would probably use acrylic paint to do the weathering, there might be a chance I could use enamel paint for the weathering. I know you don't have as much control and you have to use thinner and there's a chance you're gonna wipe off the gold when you're using thinner to wipe away some of your mistakes or even wipe away some of the actual weathering that you're gonna do. So it's always suggested you use acrylic paint. So once it was sealed up with the enamel, it actually gave it a really cool look and I'm super happy with the way this actually turned out. It was a lot of work and I'm definitely not gonna use uh, metallic um, gold acrylic paint if I was ever to do something like this or anything of any kind of grand scale. I would definitely go with the rattle can version and that's the way I would complete the prop. But it actually turned out really good. Like I said, I'm super happy with it and it was time to move on to finishing the stand. Now for the stand, I did a little bit of extra work on this only because I wanted to make sure it turned out really, really awesome. And the idea was is that because there were so many layer lines on here and the seam actually turned out like on the back edge because I have it on here. You can actually see it in the gold, but it's in the back. Well, where I say is the back now. But what happened was is I didn't want to do a whole ton of sanding on this. I just wanted to sand away some of the seam just to make sure it went away a little bit because I knew I'd be adding a ton of filler primer to this. Because of the layer lines and the angles on here, I actually talked to the Broken Nerd over, uh, he actually is the one who designed this and I'll put the link down in the description. He said to just lay on heavy coats of filler primer and that'll help fill in those layer lines. Now that was a really good suggestion because it actually turned out really awesome. So after putting down a really, really heavy coat of filler primer, the standard rattle can filler primer that I used on all my other parts, I actually went in and did a little bit of wet sanding with a little bit of the 320s, the little bit of the 320 grit um, flexible sandpaper from 3M. 
And this stuff works really good wet or dry. It's the same as the 220, you can buy packs of it. It's a little pricey, but it's definitely worth it because it really doesn't clog up as easily as regular sandpaper. And because of the flexible backing, it actually lasts a lot longer. So I did a little bit of wet sanding on here to remove some of the burrs and some of the little bit of um, what happens with filler primer. If it hits an edge or a little bump, it may put a little string out after it because it's actually a little bit thicker. And I actually had a few of those little strings along the little, the little rivets that are along the base of the model here. So I cleaned it up, did my wet sanding, let it dry, and then I applied another coat of filler primer, another heavy coat of filler primer, and let that dry, did a little bit more wet sanding until I got the finish that I was happy with so I could put on the gold paint. Now with the gold paint, again, I used some standard rattle can gold paint. And for that, I actually used some of the specialty metallic paint from Rust-Oleum. And this is some of their high gloss, super reflective paint. And I thought that was a good idea for the stand because the eye had turned out so dark. I wanted the stand to look to really pop like it was designed before or after the eye was actually designed. And it was something that would never get touched as much. So it shouldn't really be as dirty as the eye. So once I had a couple of coats of this really great metallic gold paint down, I was really happy with the way this looked and it really turned out awesome. Now you can see here on the bottom, you can still see the original color paint. I don't I had no reason to paint the bottom, but there's an opening here to put electronics and a light and there's a small uh, tunnel that goes through to the top. And I do have some LEDs and I've been playing with some ideas on how to finish it, but I'm actually happy with the way this looks. This turned out awesome. I did put down quite a few coats of the metallic gold paint to really fill in all the layer lines that I didn't fill in with the filler primer, but it turned out awesome. And the eye actually fits in here really good. It's not as snug as I want it to be, but I don't want it to snap in there. I just want it to fit in there. And it does do that. It just fits in there nicely and it'll look really cool on the shelf once I put it up on display. So I'm really happy with the way the finishing turned out. It was very labor intensive only because I used that uh, um, metallic acrylic uh, gold paint when I should have used some sort of rattle can paint and got that done right away. But either way, it was a learning experience for the finishing techniques that I wanted to develop for all the other props that I do for the rest of 2018. And I am super happy with the way this looks. My G-Max did a stellar job on all the prints. The Matter Hackers Pro Series filament held up really nice under the sanding and all the abuse that it took when I was constantly taking the model apart. And of course, the verbatim filament turned out really great. It's easy to sand and it really took the filler primer and the paint really well. And the models were all really designed well. Like I said, Black Ram Industries designed the eye and Broken Nerd designed the stand. And I'll have all the links for all, both of these models down in the description. So if you want to go check these out and print them yourself, you can go check them out. But I'm really happy with my very first prop and it's going to look really cool on the shelf once we clean off all the models from the 365 project, except for a few one I want to keep around because they're some of my favorites. And I like keeping them around because they remind me of all the work that I put in on the 365 project. But as this was a part of the 365 project and I did say I was going to do all the finishing work and share it with you guys, that's what I did. And that's what today's episode's all about. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I hope you guys found this interesting and informative. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out those affiliate links down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon.